Hi, and welcome to this class for lower back pain. I wanted to share with you just a little bit of my journey with lower back pain, how I healed from it, and some of the practices that I did. Unfortunately, there's a lot of misconceptions with lower back pain, and I went about it all wrong at first, so hopefully you can learn from my experience and implement some of these practices and hopefully they'll help you. So when my lower back started bothering me, it was from a surfing injury originally. I was 26 years old and <clears throat> from just a, a lot of years of abuse to my lower back from surfing, skateboarding, snowboarding, slamming, etc. There was kind of a final incident where I really felt it go out on a wipeout. And I thought that I just had to stretch it. So I, I allowed time for it to heal. But then when I went back into practicing yoga, immediately I was just trying to stretch as much as I could just to get my lower back felt tight, so it felt like I needed to stretch it. It was hurting, felt like I needed to stretch it. I went about doing that for a long time and continued to just cause more issues. Eventually, I saw a, a doctor, an osteopath, and the osteopath helped to give me some ideas about how mobilizing the joints below and above were more important in actually creating stability in that area. So this really changed the way that I thought about yoga. I'd actually, embarrassingly, I'd already been teaching. I was a yoga teacher, and this was never talked about in any of the training that I, that I had done. So I started to implement this in the way that I was teaching, and it really shaped the way that I teach all my yoga classes. Here on YouTube, some of you guys might have experienced that. <clears throat> but the sequence that I'm going to show you today is some of those exercises that I initially started to do to actually create more stability around the area that was feeling painful and to mobilize joints just below and above. And after doing that for a little while, it allowed time for the area to heal. Once it healed, then I was able to start mobilizing directly again into the lumbar spine without any issues. But if you've been going about just trying to stretch and jam at the area, then you might be in the same boat that I was in. Now the last factor that I've come to integrate into my teaching is this other idea, not only the physical of cumulative stress or a specific injury, but I also had imaging done and the imaging showed that I had at that young age herniated discs. Uh, it revealed that there was arthritis in my facet so I had something called facet syndrome where the little bones off the side of the spine had compression and there was degeneration in my spine arthritis in my lumbar spine L5 S1. So I thought Oh my gosh, this is this is just terrible. Like I can't, the it, I'm gonna have to get surgery. And the osteopath assured me, you know what? Th these are things that people can live with. It's it's not that you automatically have to get surgery just because you have those things. And to support that, I became interested in the work of uh, Dr. Sarno, which I highly recommend if you've had a chronic lower back situation for a very long time. And he, in his book, Healing Back Pain, he goes over these same findings that exist in people with and without pain, that there's actually isn't a correlation between that type of imaging and pain. So if you do have that type of imaging, don't freak out. Of course, you want to get checked out by a doctor, by a skilled physical therapist, PT, who can help you, guide you, direct you to make sure you're doing exactly what you should be doing. But he goes into all the psychological effects that 
our body can start to manifest these different pain syndromes as a result of repressed emotion, specifically anger. And he assigns a personality type, which is someone who is always trying to do good and often stuffs the feelings. So that's something to consider too. There's, it's now becoming more widely accepted that there is an emotional component that there is a psychological component to injury. Our sh if we're under high stress, those are the times when things usually go out, right? When your back goes out, you're stressed out. And it's something to consider. So I recommend looking into that as well. That was also part of my healing journey. But let me go into this. And now I can go through an entire yoga practice without any issues. I can do whatever I want. And it's not to say that from time to time, it might get irritated if I surf too aggressively for like a week, I go on a surf trip or something and take a bad slam, it can get irritated. But it's not months of pain, it's a few days. And then I know that if I don't try to jam at the area, I just keep moving, things will eventually get better. So the last thing that I'll say before we get started is my teacher in the therapeutics of yoga, her, um, she, Anna Deluri, she always said that walking was so important that we're bipedal hominids. We are meant to walk. We're designed to walk. And she would take these students with just the worst situations and she would say that if you're not walking at least 30 minutes three times a week, this, all of these exercises in yoga, it's not going to do a big difference. That is your priority is starting to walk again. Take up your bed and walk again. Okay, this might help. So the first thing that we're gonna do is find our neutral spine because we're gonna start to move from that neutral spine. So lie down onto the back, bend your knees and put your feet down on the floor. Your spine has curves. You feel you have a curve in your neck where your neck curves away from the floor and you have a curve in your lower back. Your upper back touches the ground, as does your sacrum, just below your sacrum, tailbone, middle tailbone, uh, buttock area. So you don't want to flatten those curves. Those curves are natural. You allow for those to be there. And now we're going to round the lower back as we exhale, flatten the lower back down into the ground, like you're trying to smush something underneath your back. And then as you inhale, I want you to gently arch your lower back as much as feels appropriate for you so that maybe like I could slide something underneath there, but don't force it because remember, these are the areas that we want to chill with. And then just a gentle pumping there. Two more times. Rounding and arching. And let's do it with the breath now. So as you exhale, slow breath out. Our breath can help to train the nervous system to stay calm and to let go of the tension. And as you inhale, go back into the arched position. Now, come right into neutral. So just relax there. Find where your neutral curve is. And now we're going to stabilize. So we want to think of the ribs as a pipe aiming down towards the hips. We tend to get weak in our transverse abdominis, these muscles that surround and surround the spine. And so we're going to teach those to strengthen. We don't want to spine, let the spine lift there. We don't want to let it flatten. And we're going to start with this very basic exercise, just marching here. So bringing one knee up and then the other, but without that area moving. Imagine I put quarters on each one of your hip bones. Or from when I was a kid, there was this um, killer coffee from McDonald's that got a lady $2 million of the very hot coffee from McDonald's. Imagine I put one of those cups on each one of your hips and you don't want it to spill. It didn't kill her, just burned her. Okay, now let's see if we can move the arms because we want to be able to move the upper spine and the shoulders independent of the lower back. Can you take your right arm back? But notice the tendency, your whole body wants to move with it. So just see how much can my right arm move without the rest, without my ribs lifting. And then change, come with the left arm. Okay, good. Now, bring your left knee up, 
bring the right hand to the left knee. And as you slide your right leg out along the floor, be mindful to keep this connection, slide the left arm back. Slide the heel back in and change sides. So it's getting a little complex here, but you just remember that you keep your stability here. But don't be rigid, breathe in and out through your nose. So your nervous system is training the body to relax and stay calm through this movement. Best if you can slide your heel. I have the mat in the way, it's not ideal. Best if you can slide the heel on a floor, like a wood floor or tile or something. Okay, good. Now, open your arms to the side. Take your feet about the width of your mat and just let your knees windshield wiper right and left. And you can turn your head the opposite way and we'll use the exhalation. The exhalation can help us to really ground and let go. So as you exhale, let the knees go to the right and look to your left. And then change sides. Inhaling to center and exhaling to change sides. Last one. Nice job. So notice we haven't done any jamming, we haven't yanked knees in or anything. It's just real gentle pumping movements. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we want to add strength and stability from our glutes and our hips. <clears throat> These muscles dictate what's happening in the lumbar. So we're going to do a strengthening exercise, a bridge. We're going to lift the hips up and try to keep the rib cage like a pipe aiming straight to the pelvis as the shoulders open instead of arching the lower back, and then lower back down. And we'll just lift up and down five or six times. Depending on the health of your hips and hamstrings, you might be able to do a little bit more. But if you feel like those muscles are really starting to fatigue, just cut it off at five, maybe eventually working your way up to 10 or 12. Now pause on this next one. And I wanna make sure that we really feel those muscles turning on in the glutes and the hamstrings that are gonna to help to open up the tension in the front of the pelvis. So contract your hamstrings like you're pulling the backs of your knees towards your butt and you're moving the back, the buttocks towards the backs of the knees. And then roll the buttocks so you feel top of the buttocks move towards the knees. You should feel the butts are turned on as are the hamstrings. Slowly lower down and then lift back up into that strong position. Lower yourself down. Good job. Now cross your right ankle over your left knee. And as you exhale, let the legs go halfway over to the left and then back to center. Just like windshield wiper legs three times. Then come back to center, and depending on how tight your outer hip is, you might put your heel up on a chair, your left heel, or foot at the wall. Or it might feel like enough stretch just to cross your ankle in this position and let the thigh turn out and move away from you. On a scale of one to 10, intensity of the stretch here, 
You want to be just at a four. You just want to feel that these muscles can soften and relax. Remember, we're not trying to jam and go for sensation. Often when we're in pain, we think we need intense sensation because we're so used to the sensation of the pain. Instead, just think of a more mild, gentle sensation. That's how we're going to teach the body. We're not going to teach the body of the violence. Trust me, <laughs> the body's not going to learn that way. But eventually, as you practice this more and more, you might be able to work your way into holding the back of the leg or the shin. But notice I want to keep my lumbar spine long. I don't want to crunch up to do it. So that's an example of what it would look like eventually. Release and change the cross. Left ankle over your right knee. As you exhale, let the legs fall over halfway to the right. And back to center, two more times. Nice. Now, putting the right foot at the wall, the chair, holding back a leg or just hanging out in this position. And we're encouraging the external rotation here of the left femur bone so that the knee moves away from you. Feel the lower back is long in this stretch. The chest muscles are open. That's why I like actually foot at the wall a little bit better as opposed to hugging in so that you can allow the neck, shoulders, and chest to all relax and open. It's kind of like a twofer, two for one. Oh, what a beautiful sensation it is here just to let everything in the hips start to relax and open. Doesn't that feel nice? The chest and the shoulders too, uncross that. Roll onto your side gently and come on up. Okay, next we're gonna come onto the hands and the knees. And now that we've done some stuff to mobilize the shoulders, the spine, the hips, we're gonna get directly into mobilizing the spine itself. Because <clears throat> you don't want that arthritis to set in. <laughs> okay, so now just gently start to tuck the buttocks round to the lower back, middle back, upper back, and neck. And less is more with this at the beginning. Just remember, we want to do gentle ranges here. And then flip the buttocks the other way. Arch to the lower back, middle back, upper back, neck. Two more times, nice and smooth with your breath. Slow exhalation through your nose. Nice smooth inhalation through the nose as you come into the extension. All right, now let's try these two last stretches just to feel, see how the spine feels. So we'll go into some gentle flexion, not much happening here in child's pose, extended child's pose. If that's going well, you can try walking the hands forward more. Notice I have the toes curled under, which inhibits a little bit of that flexion. And if that one's all feeling really good, you can come into a full balasana with the toes pointed back, knees together, and this really brings more flexion into the lumbar. But don't force it. So I'd recommend actually sticking with the extended one for the first week or two that you practice this video. 
practicing three times a week, taking rest days in between. And then let's try one more stretch. We'll start with the hands just stretched out in front, coming into a mild extension here, cobra variation. And I want you to think of like one smooth curve through the spine. So instead of the spine pooling into the lower back, or the back bend rather pooling into the lower back, take the energy of the lumbar up through the middle, up to up to the upper back, up to the neck as if there's one smooth curved line up through the spine. That's not anatomically what's going on. We know now because of the different curves, but that's the sensation you're going for. And if that's going really well, after a week or two, you might progress it to this. Now this puts more strain into the lumbar, so it's something that we're going to build up to. Remember, we just want to allow for the healing to come at first before we go into deeper and deeper stretching. After that, let's come for three breaths into either your extended child's or balasan. Sl slow breath in through the nose and slower, longer breath out through the nose. And release. So you're on the road now to your healing journey. This is a more basic of what I would do for back hair series. I do have classes that are more advanced that go deeper into the stretching that you could start to implement after you feel very comfortable with this, after practicing this for a couple of months, maybe a month and a half, implementing it three times a week and feeling like you're getting good progress, then you could start to add in those videos. And I'll put links to those videos in the description, in the first comment, and I might pop up a couple here and there. All right, so if you have any questions, drop them below. Let me know how this has helped to heal you. Share this with friends who might need it, family members. It's a great way to be of service and to pass it on and also hit the like button if this is helping you. And you could subscribe to the channel for more classes and move into your yoga journey as you feel ready for it. Now just remember, I'm a yoga teacher. I'm not a doctor. I'm just sharing the practices that I use that I felt beneficial. You should always consult with your doctor, find a skilled PT, physio, or osteopath in your area, and make sure that what you're doing is appropriate for your body. All right, thanks so much for joining, and I'll see you next time.